Hi, this is Vance Williams. Today I'll be sharing insights on the Forex market. I'll tell you what it is, its function in the world, and I'll show you opportunity even Forex traders don't know about. Forex is an acronym for foreign exchange. It's the largest market in the world with an estimated daily trading volume of $4 trillion. The United States has the biggest economy in the world at $14 trillion per year. The Forex market moves that amount every four days. The Forex is a network of thousands of banks in the world with no central location. There's nobody in charge. The primary function of the Forex is to determine the fair value of a currency. If you were from the U.S. and traveled to Japan to explore the countryside, you'd need their local currency to buy things. So you'd go to a bank or an exchange office and trade your U.S. dollars for yen. How would you know what a fair rate of exchange is? How do they know they're not giving you too much? And how do you know you're getting enough? There's only one way to know, and that's by looking at the rate of exchange in the Forex market. The fair exchange rate is not determined by an individual, a business, a country, or even a group of countries. The price is set by all of the buyers and sellers of the world in real time. It's the most accurate pricing you can get in the market because it's near impossible to manipulate. It's just too big. Currencies are traded in pairs. The Japanese currency and U.S. currency are traded as a pair, represented by U.S. dollar yen. If the U.S. dollar is moving up in price, then the yen is moving down in value by exactly the same amount. Just think of an old scale where you place weight on one side and that side goes down. The other side goes up by exactly the same amount. Because currencies are traded in pairs, you can either buy or sell. There is no difference. Buy the euro dollar or sell the euro dollar. It's the same thing. There are countless factors that can and do cause price movement. For example, Increasing the supply of money decreases the value of a currency because now there's more money but the same amount of goods and services. Likewise, good news about the future could cause speculation about a better economy and this could cause price to rise. So exactly how does the Forex market determine a fair price? The market operates on the principle of supply and demand. Imagine you want to sell your car. If you search around locally, you'll likely find examples of your car with comparable features. If the number of people who want your car is greater than the number of cars available, price will rise. If there are more people selling your car than buying your car, the price will fall. At any given moment in the Forex, if the volume is greater in favor of the buyers, the price is rising. If the volume is greater for the sellers, the price is falling. There are many different types of participants in this market who might use the market for different purposes. Hedge funds, for example, may have a more complex strategy. So when they buy a currency, it may be one part of an overall plan to capture inefficiencies in the marketplace at large. Multinational corporations may be exchanging large sums of currency for payroll. Commercial banks might be protecting the value of their assets, hedging a drop in one currency value against the rise of another. In 2001, the platforms for personal computers became stabilized and reliable. This opened the door to anyone with a personal computer. I think that most people are attracted to this new opportunity because it offers freedom and flexibility unlike anything we've seen. And it has truly unique features. For example, it takes the same skill to make $10 a day as it does to make $1,000 a day. Because of this and the fact that you can start trading with as little as $300, tens of thousands of people from all walks of life have come to try their hand at Forex trading. The basic proposition is pretty compelling. The market can only go two directions, up or down. Since the market can only go two directions, you basically have a 50-50 chance of being correct knowing nothing at all. Therefore, if you had some knowledge, you could increase your probability of success. This is accomplished with another principle human behavior is repetitive. Because human behavior is repetitive, we can observe human behavior and predict with great accuracy what people are likely to do in the future. Think of traffic patterns. If you map traffic each day near a city, you would begin to see certain patterns repeat over and over again. An obvious one would be how congested things get at rush hour. If you continued to watch, you would see other patterns too. For example, you'd notice that big trucks tend to drive in a particular lane. This is no different from the patterns in the forex market because human beings cannot escape their tendency to repeat patterns. So as buyers buy and sellers sell, behavior patterns emerge. When these patterns form again in the future, we can know with a high degree of probability what will happen next. It's easy to see patterns that predict price direction 70, 80, and even 90% of the time. 
Now, if you add the concept of money management, you can control the size of your wins and the size of your losses. If I risk $1 to make $2 in each trade, something interesting happens. My pattern of success rate is 70%, but I only need to be right just over 33% of the time to make a profit. Now, this is where I tell you something I promised at the start of the video. I said I would show you an opportunity that even most Forex traders don't know about. You see, most traders in the world are focused on exactly what I told you. They use the high probability patterns and they use good money management. And what is their result? They fail. You're never going to make money over time trading Forex by focusing on information about the market. I'll give you a simple real life example. Where I live, you can save money by shopping at our grocery store on Saturdays. Suppliers know that the largest numbers of people are going to be at the store on Saturdays. So that's the day they tend to compete for those customers. A penny saved is a penny earned, they say. In other words, it doesn't matter if you make $10,000 a month if you spend it all and have nothing to show for it. So when you save money, you make money. Now, you can make money shopping on Saturday, but would you? We would find out if we tracked exactly what you did. So I say, okay, go shopping and just write down what you do. After a few weeks, I would then say, all right, now let's review what happened. What types of things might we find out? We might find out that you did save money on things you bought, but did you save money overall? Did you go shopping hungry one or more times? And because you were hungry, did those impulse items offset any savings? Did you buy things that you might use in the future just because a deal was too good to pass up? If we were really checking to see if you were successful saving money, you would quickly realize there's just no way to save money if you don't have a plan. You would realize that as part of that plan, you must make some rules about yourself. For example, you might have a rule to eat something before you go. If you like to stock up on things, then you might need a rule that says you can only buy it if it will be used within 90 days. Now notice how profit has very little to do with any information about the store and everything to do with the decisions you make. 95% of the traders in the world focus on the market. A successful trader focuses on their plan. We already know that you can save money by shopping on Saturdays. That's not the problem. The problem is what you do when you get there. If you're interested in trading, my advice is to learn all about trading before you get involved. Whatever you do, don't do what everyone else is doing. One of my teachers used to say, if you want to be successful, find out what everyone else is doing and go the other way. It's really good advice. If you'd like to learn more about trading, I'd like to invite you to visit my site at forexartofwar.com. There you can download my free ebook, Eight Things They Don't Tell You About Forex Trading. It will explain many of the common mistakes that traders make over and over and how easily you can avoid making these same mistakes yourself. I can promise you that this little ebook will save you a lot of time, a lot of money, and point out at least one thing you never knew. You'll see that what people don't know really does hurt them. So until next time, thank you, stay great, and remember that success is not about what the market does. It's about what you do.